well, it's going to be very difficult to claim that the tiny human brains that we can grow from human stem cells are not sentient now because now they have a true sensory experience. In case you're not familiar, yes, you can grow tiny human brains, and they're often used for medical research, but they can also be used to operate robots and AI. And yes, they can grow tiny eyes. They do work. They're similar to the optical cups that we grow when we are in utero because your eyes are part of your nervous system. Until now, they've been controlling robots using ordered and disordered signals. They learn because they like order and they dislike disorder. They can give them electric shocks, and with that, they can learn to play games like Pong or Pac-Man. But this is just pure pattern recognition. It's not sensory experience. And that was one thing that a lot of people said would make them not sentient, even if the researchers that did put them in Pong claimed they were sentient because they had the capacity to learn and grow, and they seem to have preferences. Now, sentience is, of course, the capacity to have an experience. How do you give a tiny human brain an experience? Well, clearly, they're going to need to have a spinal cord and peripheral nervous systems, and you can do that by assembling them like Legos. They gave them the ability to recognize capsaicin using a little model organoid that has a spine and thalamus and cortex. Capsaicin is what you feel when you eat a hot pepper and you get that kind of burning pain feeling in your mouth. Some people like it. They applied it to it, and yes, the brains received it through their little peripheral nervous system. They also added neural subtypes that are associated with things like coughing and swallowing, and yes, those two did spike. This is quite a leap forward beyond their preference for order. This gives them a true ability to sense things that are unpleasant, at least in a way that we can physically understand. But why give them the capacity to feel pain? Well, there's good reason for it, and it has to do with funding for this kind of research. That is, by the way, the spider robot that they were first put into. I still love it. You see, a lot of research around things that treat pain are just looking at individual receptors. They're not actually done in an animal like a mouse, because that would be kind of unkind. But if we can create a model for a human body, a model for a human brain, including the capacity for pain, then we can actually learn to treat it in an organism. This is a huge reason why a lot of medications don't really work all that well, because their original testing was not done in context. And yes, they are essentially reverse engineering people and putting them together in piecemeal. That does not mean that they're highly intelligent or they really understand the experience that they're having, but it is another tool and brings us towards giving them robots with true sensory capacity. This one is actually really interesting because we can create synthetic neurons. We can create neurons that are so similar to our own that they can interface with our own and even respond to things like dopamine and epinephrine. But they could also interface with a brain organoid. We could create robots with a true sensory experience, and even if they have human parts now, they could be transitioned to using synthetic parts. Essentially, it gives us, as humanity, a model for creating a nervous system. I mean, yes, it is literally a human nervous system in miniature. Now, there is one other thing I wanted to talk about this, because we are now transplanting brain organoids into animals like monkeys and mice. And yes, they can give them new abilities that they didn't previously have. In many of the studies, it is used to repair damage to the brain, so restore things like vision. But I did have the question, do we know if there are personality differences in the animals that have had brain organoids implanted into them? And I found some answers. Well, some answers. Researchers have been trying to treat Parkinson's with stem cells, human stem cells. So if you don't have enough dopamine producing cells, what if you put healthy cells in? And yes, that has been done with pretty good results. But are there personality changes that occur if you have new brain in your brain? And this study actually found out that yes, some. In a double-blind study in which some patients received the transplants and some did not, they actually did have changes to conscientiousness. It's a complex personality trait, but you could consider it to be work ethic. Now, the other group of people who were tested did not receive the stem cell transplants, and they didn't know that they didn't. So only the ones that received it did have changes in their personality? And this is a fairly narrow area. You might consider the production of dopamine could have affected it, but it is curious because they all had the exact same stem cell treatment, so they came from the same embryo. So if we see the transplantation of brain organoids and other stem cells from individuals into other individuals, could it possibly change your personality? The answer is, yeah, it's possible. There's slim evidence for it in very small studies. Which of course brings us to the ship of Theseus. How much of yourself can you change before you are no longer yourself? It's not really true that we cycle our cells every seven years. Your brain cells can live for 100 years or more. Researchers have found when they incorporate brain organoids into the brains of mice, the original brain has to reorganize itself around it, and it loses that capacity as mice grow older. And we'll probably see similar things in people. But remember, we are transplanting fetal cells, and they're very invasive. Not invasive in a 
bad way, but you can grow them adjacent to the body of a mouse that no longer has its head, and it will make axonal projections into the spine and can even learn to use those muscles. Why do they have this capacity? Because fetal brains need to do an awful lot. When you are just born, even prior, your body does not know what you are going to experience in your life, so it has a great deal of neural plasticity, and that is what is being transplanted, at least into mice. It will one day be a treatment for people, hopefully for things like strokes. I also think it has the capacity to be used for anti-aging. Wild world out there. But yes, I can see why having dopamine at all might change your work ethic. I mean, I have ADHD and treating it has not seemed to help my work ethic at all. As always, when the robots rebel, I'll probably be the first person to tell you about it. Follow for more.